uh, Turkey has a very tight grip on um, on the Kurdistan region in Iraq. It is true, though, that um, the PUK, which um, governs the Suleymaniya governorate, has been reluctant to cooperate with Turkey the way uh, the KDP has. Um, and now with this security arrangement with, with Baghdad, um, Turkey may feel more free to do things like this in the Suleymaniya governor. Turkey kills um, kills politically active Kurds, or in this case, journalistically active Kurds in Suleymaniya. It's Iran that's killing uh, uh, Kurdish dissidents. Um, so this has been going on for a long time, I suppose. Of course, the, the, the security arrangement with, with Baghdad um, adds an extra danger, but the danger has always been there. KDP is very... Uh, dependent on Turkey, both politically and economically. So um, Turkey just has them in their pocket, so to speak. And it depends on what they, you know, will they achieve their goals? You know, it depends on what their goals are. If if their goal is to enrich themselves further, then probably they're being very successful, you know. But if their goal would be, although I never see anything that, that points to that they have this goal, but if their goal is to achieve more freedom for Kurdistan for, and for Kurdish people, then obviously they are not reaching their goal at all. But I, I don't think that's their goal, you know, anymore. Maybe, you know, far back in, in, in history it was, but that has faded away since long. There's this perception like, oh, they're more like activists than journalists and uh, maybe they they are connected to terrorism, and um, there is a lack of understanding what Kurdish journalism is. Um, that they have that they have another perspective, the perspective of struggle, the perspective of the people, and that you know I've been working in Kurdistan on the ground for years, and I've I've attended many occasions where also Kurdish media, like your own uh, Mesopotamia agency, were making reports. And when I read the reports, they were correct reports, you know. And and the Turkish press is always lying, like always lying. Um, and still the Turkish press is taken more seriously somehow. And yeah, that always bothers me a lot. So I, I would, you know, I would love it if people would, uh, would take the journalists more seriously. And this kind of murders, these kind of crimes, they, these are really crimes, even if, you know, if, if Turkey says it's at war with the PKK, or, you know, you cannot target journalists. Tur journalists are civilians, and civilians are protected in international law. If if Turkey says it's a war, it's a war crime. And, and it's a crime anyway. You cannot just kill people. But everybody's silent. Also, politics is silent. But if we didn't have the Kurdish press and Kurdish journalists, there were so many stories we wouldn't know. Like Abdurrahman Gök, who, who who made the pictures of the young man who was killed in the Nevros grounds, of the mothers who who have their their the children the the remains of their children sent to them in boxes via the post office, um, the men who were thrown out of helicopters. People say, oh, that's outrageous. That probably didn't happen. But later it turns out it's of course true. So the and this goes back to the 80s and 90s. So many stories we would never heard have heard of if it wasn't for Kurdish journalism. So, you know, I learned a lot from them and I respect it a lot, really.